Meditation turns the attention systematically within, powerfully within, to experience and explore deeper levels of mind, deeper levels of human intelligence. And these deeper levels of mind in the meditative state, more abstract levels of intelligence, correspond to the direct experience of more abstract levels of nature. In the meditative state, the awareness is withdrawn completely and it is expanded maximally to be abstract, unbounded, universal bliss. In that meditative state, our localized awareness has expanded to identify with and become universal awareness. So we become less personal. We become more one. Less individual, individual okay. more universal, but it's equally personal. Because in both, in both respects, whether it's localized I or universal I, it's still I, our subjectivity. It's still us, but in our more expanded reality. So that expanded meditative state is the direct conscious, you could say, union with or experience of the unified field, which is a universal ocean of intelligence that gave birth to the universe 13.7 million billion years ago and probably an infinity of simultaneously coexisting universes. So in meditation, well, okay, in the normal state, as I understand it, I'm looking at you, I'm the observer, you're the observed, and there's a dynamism, there's a field happening, I'm observing you. And I'm separate, I feel at one level I'm separate, and you're separate, and there's a process. Yes. Now I understand from talking to you earlier in meditation, that actually becomes, not blurred, but it becomes joined somehow. Right, exactly. You're given a perfect definition, firstly, of what we mean by waking consciousness, ordinary consciousness. In waking consciousness, from the moment the alarm clock goes off in the morning, and we're aware of the alarm, to our thoughts and actions throughout the day, we're always aware <coughs> of something, whether it's a thought, a feeling, or an object. In the meditative state, that localized, focused attention starts to withdraw from the senses and starts to relax and expand and expand to become non-local, unbounded. In that unbounded state, consciousness is all that there is, wide awake, abstractly aware of its own nature. So in that state, consciousness is the knower, the observer, but it's also the observed, consciousness observing itself, and the process of knowing, all three. So the threefold structure of waking experience gets, you could say, transcended into this unified structure in which the knower, knowing, and known are united as, you could say, pure consciousness. That's the meditative state. That's the defining difference between meditative, unified consciousness and diversified waking consciousness. And how does that affect us in our daily lives? Well, the <clears throat> you could say the meditation process itself, and I would recommend a practicing meditation, a technique like Transcendental Meditation, twice a day. It's very simple, very effective, most effective, and even the easiest. During the meditative state, you could say we're withdrawing from a few moments, for a few moments from life. But the reason you do that, apart from the sheer joy of such expansion and bliss, which anyone can experience, is the results in activity, the practical benefits. When the awareness is deeply refreshed, and by the way, when the mind settles down completely to this meditative state of absolute silence, the body simultaneously settles down to a level of rest at least three times deeper than deep sleep. Now, the reason doctors prescribe it, and the reason I started meditating through the recommendation of a doctor, was for the deep physiological rest. Physiological rest basically is, a, you could say, a panacea. A, you know, it's a cure-all. Doctors will always prescribe rest. So whether you have high blood pressure or any other stress-related disease, and most disease is stress-related, to dissolve the stress through profound rest has powerful health benefits. Lifespan is an estimated 15 years longer in regular meditators. That's better than exercise and a whole lot easier. Don't stop exercising. That's also good, but meditation is very powerful for health. 
And that's why I started. But the reason I stuck with it, and prob probably most people do, millions of people have, is for the mental benefits. What happens to the brain is even more dramatic. Our normally scattered, chaotic, waking consciousness, where the whole brain activity, electrical activity of the brain is completely uncorrelated, scattered, becomes profoundly integrated. It's called global EEG coherence, maximum orderliness of brain functioning. And that's how a doctor describes it. But experientially, orderly brain functioning means orderly clear thinking. And orderly clear thinking means orderly clear speech. And it also means orderly, purposeful, effective action. And effective action is fulfilling action. So it's, it's for th clear thinking, powerful action, and success and happiness in life, in addition to health, in addition to enlightenment, which is something we can talk about later. Oh, we can talk about it now. Absolutely. So, but let me just, let me just go. So, where I, where I would translate that is that the body is being allowed to return to balance, find its own balance, because the mind is slowing down right. and the body starts to slow down. And one thing, and we were talking about this earlier at lunch, I find when I meditate, I meditate probably an hour most days, it really takes me time to come down and I can see the first, often the first half an hour, so much activity and I'm, I'm watching, I'm not doing anything to still myself but I feel stillness coming over time and then something settles and then I feel a complete relaxation. Yes. And the benefits of that, both yes. physically and mentally. Yeah. But it does take time, doesn't it? Did you find it takes time? <sighs> well, it, it generally takes time depending upon the efficiency of the practice, if I can be completely candid. Yes, yes. Um, it takes a trick, an age-old trick, to settle quickly. And I mean within minutes to a state of absolute stillness and global EEG coherence, suspension of breathing, natural, not for a long period, but such a state of quiet that the body actually doesn't need to, for a short period, even breathe. It takes a state of absolute rest. There's a trick involved. I could explain how meditation works, transcendental meditation. It would take a few minutes, but <coughs> basically meditation is almost a trick to lure, a lure the attention powerfully within so that you transcend thought altogether and quickly. And that also drags the body with it to a state of deep rest. Now, if you're driving a car and you take your foot off the accelerator, it will slow down to what we call an idle. If you close your eyes and just wait, the body and mind will stop revving eventually. Meditation, transcendental meditation, is a technique to accelerate that and take it much deeper. It's as though you grab a weight and the weight drags you down. It's very blissful. It's very blissful. So that's why, you know, training, special training in meditation takes a few days, a couple of hours a day, to master this. But you know, I really recommend people look into it. And if you're already meditating, anybody, and it's working, Great. If you're getting that experience repeatedly, reliably, and quickly, efficiently, of unbounded awareness, and deep, deep rest, deep calm, great. If you're not, and you might want to try something that may be more efficient, I would try Transcendental Meditation. Okay. So, we touched on enlightenment. How do you see enlightenment fitting into the bigger picture? Well, it is a big picture, but how it does is. it... It is. Enlightenment is the goal of life. And you know, people really need to understand that and what it is and not why it's the goal of life. Meditation is... So for you, what is enlightenment? Enlightenment, and you can look at it many ways, is total development of mind, body, behavior. It's total brain functioning. Now, normally when we think and then speak and act, we're utilizing an estimated 5% of the brain. And by that I mean something very specific. How much of the brain is actually involved in a particular thought and action. And it's usually an extremely isolated fragment. I studied physics. For 15 years, I developed this sliver. If I had studied mathematics, that one. If I had studied uh, music or the arts, this one. But nothing we study in school develops the total brain. Meditation develops, utilizes, engages, develops the total brain.